Hey guys, it's James here from E Bass Guitar and today's lesson we're talking about reggae bass for beginners. So if you're interested in learning more about this incredible style, please do check this lesson out all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from e -Bass Guitar and welcome to this two-part special on Reggae Bass Guitar. For this lesson, we're going to be using the Bob Marnie Classic as a vehicle to learn this style. But first of all, let's check out what we're going to be covering this lesson. First of all, there is a free PDF which comes with this lesson. It's going to take apart the devices that we're going to cover in this lesson. It's also going to take apart, note for note, some of the bass lines that are used in the original of Three Little Birds. Secondly, we've had some fantastic backing track put together by my friend Simon King for this lesson. If you were a member of the Bass Lab Plus, you can jump inside the membership and download those and get jamming straight away. If you're not, I encourage you to check out the Bass Lab Plus membership. It is a full on course a program where you can really start to dig into the nuts and bolts of how to play bass guitar. There's step by step courses in there. You get monthly live masterclasses and you can also get coached by me too. So in this lesson, we're gonna be taking apart the chorus section of Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. It's an iconic piece of reggae bass playing, but I'm gonna be applying two concepts to it which are really big in reggae bass. First one I call downbeat reggae, and the second one I call non-downbeat reggae. I'm gonna be talking about those in just a second, but let's talk about reggae on a more global level. It's worth saying that when I play reggae, it's normally in the context of a much, much wider musical situation. So say I'm on a show which covers a sort of multitude of different styles of music. Reggae may be one song within the whole show, or it might just be a section for say eight, 16, 24 bars. Or say maybe I'm doing a club gig or something like that. We'll have a load of bunch of soul tunes, a bunch of funk tunes, etc. And there may be one or two reggae tunes, or we might do a section of a song as a reggae feel. So it's really sort of an, one of those styles and feels which is in my arsenal, so to speak. But I would be lying if I said I was a specialist reggae bass player, because one thing from having listened to reggae quite a bit, there are so many different layers to this music. And once you get deeper and deeper, you'll just discover more and more. And this applies to everything, whether you're talking about jazz music, Latin music. So it'd be totally wrong for me to say I'm a specialist player of reggae, but I have this kind of global overview, which is kind of super helpful. So let's talk about the feel and sound of music. The first thing is reggae is from the Caribbean. So think of sunshine, think of cocktails, Think of Bob Marley and you'll be right there. But when we dig into it musically, there are a couple of really sort of unique things about it. The first thing, it has this halftime feel that you should be aware of. You'll see this halftime kind of idea a lot in music. You can get halftime funk feels as well, which are really, really cool. But the best way I can describe it is where you take a faster tempo, say something around 150 to 200 beats per minute, and then we split it literally down from going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, to one, two, one, two. The best example of this, if you wanna check this out so you can hear exactly what I mean, is to check out the Blues Brothers tune, um, Everybody Needs Somebody to Love. So if we're going through this, I'll just play it so you can hear exactly um, what I mean. So we have this kind of feel. <laughs> So if we take that original field, that's from the verse, and that is going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That is our tempo, our peat beat, or our pulse, for instance. But when we hit the bridge section, we go to this halftime field. Sometimes I feel, bum, bum, two, three, four. 
Good one, two, three, four. A one, bum, 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 one, two, three, four. Dun, dun. And then it's double time again, or back to the original tempo. And reggae has this very, very strong kind of half time feel because we're really just going boom, boom like that and if you think of it like that it's really really super helpful to, because it gives us this kind of laid back flavor which is really really cool it's worth also now just talking about the sound of reggae too it has this big thick bass sound it's super super laid back so how i tend to get this sound is by playing much much closer to the neck like this using the flesh of my fingers and start playing a little bit lighter but turning up the bass control so it really really fattens out the bottom end so we get this kind of feel like so but let's talk about the drum part now because there are a couple of really really unique things to do i'm going to play this to you in just a second the second the first thing is um, is the kick drum. In most rock and pop music, we will expect the kick drum to be on one and three. Boom, cha, boom, cha, or boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, with the snare answering on beat two and four. But on reggae music, uh, you can expect to find the kick drum on beat two and beat four. So it's almost turned it inside out so you end up with the first beat of the bar very very sparse which is one of the things which gives reggae music its light and shade which is really super super interesting i'll demonstrate that one in just a second but the other thing is from a drum part perspective they use a lot of cross stick i'm not going to take apart the patterns that they use um that's sort of way beyond this tutorial but it's worth knowing that the the kick drum will end up on beat two and four and then they were using a lot a lot of cross stick and the hi-hats will pretty much do what you expect but let me play it to you so you can hear what I mean. One, two, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then listen to that clicking, which is done from the drummer holding his stick against the skin and then tapping the side of the drum. And that's a very, very rhythmic sound that's going on to it. And you hear it's just got this look to it, which almost makes you want to dance straight away. So let's take apart the nuts and bolts of the chorus section of Three Little Birds. This is a really, really simple chord sequence. It's in the key of A and it starts off with a bar of A, then another bar of A, then up to D for a bar and then back to A for a bar. It's an eight bar sequence, so then it just repeats. So what I'm gonna do for now is just put some repeat marks in there, like so. What I'm not gonna do in this lesson is take apart absolutely everything note for note. I've transcribed the first verse or chorus section of this in the PDF, so please do check this out. But what I wanna do is take apart the feel that Aston Barrett, who's the uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers bass player, I keep wanting to say Aston Martin, but it's Aston Barrett plays there, and really break this down, because I think that's the most useful thing to do. Because the thing is, the feel is really, really loose. And what I mean by that is there's definitely a concept and a framework behind it, but what Aston is doing is mixing up, which is really, really cool. But what I found in my career is that there are times when you need to play really, really tight and prescriptive. Sometimes I'm often being paid to do this where people want things in an absolute certain way. But other times they'll let it be a lot, lot looser as well. But it's often better when you're learning a style to really pin it back to a set idea. And once you're comfortable with that, you can then start breaking out of it out of it a little bit and there's a really really core idea going on here that i'm going to write out first of all let me play it to you so you can hear what it sounds like it is this so what that is is a two measure phrase which i'm going to write out for you now on the board it starts off with two eighth notes and then a quarter note like this And then we go from an A, and then we go to an E. We take a half a beat rest, and then go to an E, 
and then to a C sharp and back to an E again like this. So that is the, the root. That's the first bar. And then it slightly gives it a little bit more syncopation. And what the word syncopation means is displacement. So it's a little bit more rhythmically complicated. Then we have this idea here, which is two sixteenth notes and a, a sixteenth note at the end. So we have a sixteenth note rest in the middle of it. So which sounds like this. So ba ba ba, fa da da ba. But what it's doing is then landing on the next meet. Ba da ba da. Three, four, da da ba dum. Three, four, ba da ba dum, like that. So I put that quarter note in there. And if you're wanting to practice this, if you're getting into sixteenth notes, um, it's worth just taking this apart because what you can do is you can do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. With sixteen notes, there are four of them per beat. And in this instance, you are playing on the first and the second. You are then breaking on the third one playing on the fourth and then back onto the, the first beat of the next or onto bang onto the second beat which sounds like ga da ba dum but really take it apart so one two three four one two three four one you can really pull rhythmic uh, stuff like this right right back and then we have this bass line here which is uh, exactly the same as the first bar so which is uh, eighth note rest and then just lean over like this and an E, a C sharp and an E like this. So let me play you this line so you can hear exactly what it sounds like. And the beautiful thing is there's almost a simplicity with this first bar and then a slightly more complex nature to the second bar, which really starts to answer each other. So let me play you this with the track. Just before I do, the same framework goes on to the D chord. Grab the PDF which goes with this lesson and you'll see exactly what I mean. One, two, one, two, three, four. So that was a concept that I alluded to earlier called downbeat reggae and that is exactly what Aston Barrett plays on this record. But I want to show you another feel there because there is this other feel which I use called non-downbeat reggae and that is where you leave the downbeat, the first beat of the bar, absolutely free and it has this real tension and release idea because you expect the first beat of the bar to be filled but yet there's a gap which is really really cool and often when I'm asked to play a reggae feel on a gig this is what I will go to because sometimes we've gone from something really frantic really funky etc and like that and intense and we want to break it down into this laid back feel and one of the coolest ways to get the light and shade in there is to start leaving the downbeat out so let me play you what this sounds like so one two three four one two one two And what this is, is a root fifth and octave idea, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out exactly what I just played there and then apply it to three little birds. And it works perfectly with the drum part, I think. So let's talk about it. It starts off with an eighth note rest. And then we have two sixteenth notes. One, landing on the second beat of the bar, which remember, that's where the kick drum is on the fifth of the chord, which is an E. So like this, like that. 
So mm. let's put, make those into 16th notes. Mm. And then we're into two eighth notes and then we hit the E and then go to the octave A like so. Don't forget, you can see this all written out on the PDF that comes with this lesson. So, mm. and then we have a rest again, like so. And then we literally come back on ourselves. So we go up, then we come down. So, mm. like so. So that is two 16th notes on the high A. And then on beat four, remember which lines up with the kick drum again, we have the E and then back down to the A like this. So that sounds like this. Remember to have a really, really strong pulse ticking away on inside you because it really help you place these notes. Again, make it super laid back, super chilled out, behind the beat, which is really cool. I'm gonna demonstrate this now with the track so you can hear what this sounds like in context. One, two, one, two, three, four. So hopefully you can now see the kind of the difference between downbeat reggae used in Three Little Birds and non-downbeat reggae. It's got slightly different sounds to it, but both of them work and sound really, really super cool. But I want to go back to the original Aston Barrett bass line and put out a little idea which I absolutely love. As I said, it's kind of super loose in places. He's mixing these ideas up, but there is this firm framework behind it. But there's also this fill that he does a bunch of times, which I can pretty much guarantee isn't an accident, which I just want to show you. Don't forget, this is in the PDF too, so you can see this written out. But it's quite clever because it can work um, really well either over either the A chord or the D chord. So let me play it to you and then I'll write it down so you can see what it looks like. So we have this initial line. <laughs> then he puts this in. <laughs> And then he, so he has this idea, which I'm going to write in here, um, which is F sharp to A and it's 16th notes. And it goes on beat three and here. And it's literally looks like this. Dude. So it's two 16th notes uh, between F sharp and A. And the same thing again between F sharp and A, and then lands on the F sharp. So, da, ga, ga, ga. Mm. Like that's a real lilt with a slight swing that you might want to get in there too, which sounds really, really cool. So try and play along with the original and really place the notes because you'll learn so much from doing that about his amazing feel and placement. But the cool thing, going back to this bass line, is it's quite clever in a lot of respects because it works brilliantly over both chords. Uh, he often plays it at the end of a second, the second bar if you listen to it on the intro. And when you put it in the context of the second bar over an A chord, you are hitting the F sharp, which is the sixth of the chord. And then it goes to the octave, which is very much derived from the major pentatonic. Um, Like so, so it's real classic major pentatonic stuff. But when you put it in the context of the D chord, which he does do a few times, you are hitting the third of the D chord, which is the F sharp, and the fifth of the D chord, which is the A. So it's kind of one of those lines that once you get really super comfortable with the whole tune, that you can sort of insert liberally as you want, because it sounds really, really cool. But I wanted to take that line apart because it was something that just really, really pricked my ears up uh, when I started taking the track apart. So let's check out the chorus section and the verse section from Three Little Birds. I'm going to have a bit of fun with this. I'm going to play the downbeat version of the bass line and I'm also going to play the non-downbeat version 
to go with that. Do comment below and tell me which one you prefer. I'd be really, really interested. I actually personally love both, but I'm gonna break out, have a little bit of fun with this later on and show you kind of where some of these ideas can go. One, two, one, two, three, four. So guys, that was the end of the first part of Reggae Bass for Beginners. If you've enjoyed this lesson, I'd love it if you could give it a like and share on social. Please do mention what the most valuable part of the lesson was for you. Don't forget, you can grab the free PDF which comes with this lesson from below. You can also grab all of the tracks from this lesson as part of a Bass Lab Plus membership along with all the other amazing benefits that come with that. So I've been James from eBass Guitar and I will catch you next time. Please don't forget to check out part two.